we lost people to hydrogen sulfide gas exposure. One of the fellows in that manure tanker truck was our oldest son, Colin. He lost his life at the age of 24. There was another fellow who uh, was 37 years old and another young fellow who was 21. I thought somebody had fell and broke a hip or a leg or an arm or something, so I went looking for them. Couldn't find them, and then for some reason I looked into the truck, and there was one of them looking up at me, so I went in to get them. And the end result was that between five and six hours later, I came to halfway down the truck or better and got out of my own power. Crawled along the side, got into the cab, and went to sleep again. And that's where they found me in the morning. Confinement gases, silo gases, farm chemicals, and carbon monoxide can all be dangerous. When inhaled, gases and mists can immediately irritate the lining of the respiratory system. From our lungs, these substances reach our bloodstream and are circulated throughout the body. All gases, all exposures have the potential to harm and not every farmer will be exposed to all types of gases. So hydrogen sulfide is more common when you have uh, livestock. Ammonia is also more common when you have livestock, but ammonia is also a chemical that is used in the crops industry. If you keep silage, you'll be exposed to nitric oxide. I think what's important is understanding that uh, these are respiratory exposures, that uh, they can harm you, and in some cases is in hydrogen sulfide with uh, very acute, uh, um, high exposures that can be deadly. The kinds of gases and mists and chemicals and things you're going to find in an agricultural setting are pretty diverse. Of course, the, the things we think about most frequently and sort of jump to right away are pesticides and herbicides. and and fertilizers and uh, you know especially the liquid versions uh, but there's also you know chemicals used in shops and maintenance garages uh, oils fuels uh, cleaners and solvents um, and even things that we use uh, kind of routinely around the yard you know for maintenance and things like that you can get a vapor or a fume from opening chemical containers or you can get the drift from when you're spraying. And the protection is going to be a mask, but it's going to vary depending upon the type of exposure. It's important to understand, at least in uh, cartridges, that there are different cartridges for different applications. When inhaled, gases and mists can immediately irritate the lining of the respiratory system. From our lungs, these substances reach our bloodstream and are circulated throughout the body. If you're unprotected, gases and mists can cause poisoning, lung disease, or long-term health effects. If you're overexposed, they could cause death. Gases and mists can be dangerous because they have pretty good potential to form very small droplets and very fine, almost particulate-like suspensions in the air that can be inhaled. And because they're gases and mists, they're very attracted to our respiratory tract, so they can cause almost uh, immediate irritation of the nose and throat in some cases. And if they're small enough, if the little mist size is small enough, it can certainly easily get deep into the lungs. Fumigants, such as phostoxin and methyl bromide, and insecticides, such as Lorsban, Desis, and Furidan, are highly toxic chemicals. I have those chemicals and the fertilizers stored in my Quonset with my gases and, and uh, where I'm doing some of my uh, mechanical work. And that's what's difficult to determine what is a safe level of additive exposure. But I think what's important to keep in mind is knowing which of these chemicals are flammable, what shouldn't be stored next to each other, what does require ventilation. Always read the label whenever you are using any farm chemical. Follow the instructions carefully. Know the hazards and study the symbols to determine what respirator and other equipment to wear. Use the least amount of chemical that's still effective and observe re-entry periods for applicated areas. Anhydrous ammonia is corrosive. It can react with the moist surfaces of the respiratory tract and the eyes. Safe work practices could save your health and even your life. In intensive livestock farming, uh, uh, there are 
a few gases that we're concerned about, probably the most common ones, the ones that we read about the most are, are gases that are a result of the decomposition of manure. Those are hydrogen sulfide, which is always one that's of uh, big concern, uh, methane and ammonia. And those are all uh, potentially very dangerous gases if we're exposed to them in high concentrations or if we're not anticipating exposure and are caught off guard. So uh, they're, they're potentially damaging to the respiratory tract, but they can also be absorbed systemically and cause uh, and other uh, symptoms and other problems as well. And in the case of hydrogen sulfide, as we know, there have been a few fatalities uh, uh, and it's still a very serious ongoing exposure concern. Human respiratory problems can develop when working with enclosed animals. Hog confinement workers are especially at risk. There's a trend to control the environment where hogs can be raised more efficiently. These environments require sophisticated waste and feed handling systems. The problem is that gases are produced in greater concentrations in these facilities, and this affects health. Hydrogen sulfide is the most dangerous gas produced with pig manure, especially during pit agitation. The longer you store any manure, uh, particularly within a confined space, the more apt you are to have a development of gases. Then when you go to remove that manure, those gases have the opportunity to be released very quickly. Hydrogen sulfide is a gas that, uh, in agriculture anyways, is most commonly associated with manure decomposition. It's got that kind of associated with that well-known kind of rotten egg uh, odor. It's a respiratory irritant, first of all, so it irritates the mucous membranes of the throat and the nose and can certainly cause irritation and damage uh, to the lungs as well, and it can also be absorbed into the bloodstream. But it also has uh, effects on the nervous system and is thought to play, uh, have an effect that we still actually don't quite completely understand in actually blocking the respiratory system uh, from functioning normally. So at, at high concentrations, it can cause what's called a knockdown effect. We used to think that that uh, was just due to the fact that in areas where there's lots of H2S, there's less oxygen, so that people would be knocked down because of the lack of oxygen, and that certainly is true. Uh, but we also think that there is some sort of a direct effect of the hydrogen sulfide on the respiratory system and the ability of the, the brain to send signals to the lung saying, you know, take a breath in. And uh, um, There's still actually uh, well, lots we need to learn about that. You may experience some dryness of the mouth or an irritation to your eyes or throat. You may develop a cough or your voice may become very hoarse. If you uh, remain in an environment and um, do not exit. That is when you can start to develop a headache or you can become nauseous. Uh, vomiting can occur and certainly the higher the levels go then you are putting yourself at more risk and more danger because unconsciousness can happen. Most of the companies in our province had liquid manure tanker trucks. A lot of the companies now have gone to a drag hose system which is a, a hose line that is connected to the, the tractors and uh, the pumping system pumps the uh, manure into the drag hose systems and that's a, a flat hose that is laid out in the fields now and it is injected that way and worked in. This equipment is, is actually very safe for working in an open air atmosphere so we do not have confined spaces and that sort of thing so it's, it's much safer than the way we used to do with tankers and so on. Uh, we all carry gas monitors, uh, H2S monitors with us at all times. I'm wearing one now. There's one in each tractor and each piece of equipment here. Uh, H2S is our, our main concern out here. Another concern in swine and poultry buildings is ammonia gas. It can also be a problem in manure composting operations. Ammonia, or NH3, is a colorless gas and has a characteristically pungent odor produced by the decomposition of animal manures. Prolonged exposure to ammonia or exposure to high concentrations of the gas can cause ulceration of the eyes and severe irritation to the respiratory system. If eye irritation occurs, the ventilation in the building should be improved. Increased ventilation will reduce gas levels in confined areas. Do not work alone and ensure that everyone is trained in emergency rescue procedures. If manure is beneath a slatted floor, water should be used to keep gases in solution. In shallow pits, 
having a thin layer of water, after scraping or draining, will help keep ammonia in a solution rather than a gas. Frequent flushing of gutter systems with water will have the same effect. Agitate only when there are no animals or people in the barn. And be sure the barn is fully aired out before entering. If it's absolutely necessary to enter a pit, continuously monitor hydrogen sulfide and methane gases first. If levels are dangerous, only trained workers with supplied air respirators should enter. Manure pits should be constructed outside the building in a way that minimizes the need for entry and maximizes safety. In the building, wire mesh or narrow slats will help keep waste from accumulating. Tight-fitting hatches, a water trap, or evacuation fans in the channels will help reduce ammonia levels. Reduce hydrogen sulfide leaks by creating a gas trap between the building and the storage outside. Silo gases are, uh, generally speaking, uh, what we call oxides of nitrogen. So they're, uh, and there's different forms of those. Nitrogen dioxide, so NO2 is probably the most common. Uh, but there's different uh, versions, if you like, or different sort of molecular uh, versions of that gas. And they form uh, in places where grain is stored, uh, or silage, uh, usually that's a silo, but uh, really can occur anywhere where there's some decomposition of, of, of stored uh, organic material, basically. This gas can be anywhere from yellow to reddish brown in color, and smell like household bleach, or it may have a sweet smell. Oxides of nitrogen are heavier than air, so they are going to sit on top of the silage, or they're going to be in cavities or depressions in the silage. The problem is, the gas can flow down the chute, and when you open the door to the barn, the gas can be right there. The greatest risk is usually within the first few days after the material has been siled. Problems that can occur when breathing in oxides of nitrogen are a mild reaction, or there could be sudden collapse and death. There could also be a delayed reaction, or a person could get silo fillers disease with possible relapse. Some of the symptoms that you may notice are nausea, coughing, shortness of breath, dizziness, sleepiness, fatigue, or fluid in the lungs. Some plants naturally store more nitrates than others. Alfalfa and brome, for instance, are lower in nitrates than oats and weeds. Do not enter a silo and adjacent areas for 14 days after filling. Silos should be fitted with blowers or fans. Ventilate with these methods 30 minutes before using silage. But be aware that even two to three weeks after it has been filled, blowers won't do anything to eliminate the pockets of gas that may be disturbed by walking through the silo or moving the silage. And post-warning signs. Another gas to be aware of is carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is, a, is an odorless gas that uh, is very difficult to detect unless you have equipment to detect it. This colorless, odorless, and tasteless gas can be produced from sources such as heaters, gas-powered pressure washers, and machinery. It causes fairly significant symptoms in people, headache and sort of flu-like symptoms and really feeling unwell and can even lead to uh, uh, a sort of loss of consciousness and, and things like that and ultimately death if it's not detected early. Never run gasoline-powered engines indoors without ventilation. Something else to be careful with is disinfectants, such as bleach, that is used in dairy barns to clean equipment and in hog barns with water for pressure washing. Be sure to wear an appropriate respirator when using these products. Well, when using disinfectants, again, uh, make sure you've had a look at the material that comes from the, the manufacturer or that's on the label. Sometimes there's information right there on how to protect yourself and how to use it properly. Make sure that proper protective equipment is being worn. So in the case of you know, sprays or cleaners, uh, making sure you've got rubber gloves or sort of the right kind of glove consider certainly a respirator depending on how the chemical is being applied. Being aware of the environment in which you're using it, make sure ventilation is adequate or stand up wind. Any mist that's generated is sort of blowing away from you. And maybe consider, again, if it's a liquid, boots and coveralls and other sort of protective gear to protect other parts of the body from exposure. 
Gases and mists are present in many activities that are performed in agriculture. It is important to be aware of the dangers and use the proper precautions. Stay safe. One of the biggest questions I always had, and still have, is how come the boys went in and didn't come out, and I did. It bugs me even yet. Why? It, uh, it was doggone hard to accept the fact that they were gone. And I don't know, for a while I just it just sort of dwelled on me, and I think it affected, I know it affected my wife as well, because I wasn't the man she was married to. It just hurt to think that, well, I always called them my boys, and referred to them as such, and always sort of took them underneath my wing, because they were a hell of a lot younger than I was. But the fact that they went and I didn't was a question that I just couldn't get an answer for it and still don't really have an answer other than hate I guess but it it hurt for years and still hurts the fact that them fellows aren't here